In 1969, NASA put a man on the moon. In 1987, Millstone Coffee put a man on a billboard. Yep, the location was 45th and Roosevelt, the second busiest intersection in Seattle at the time. The, uh, it was 32 coffees in 32 days because I was drinking a different blend of Millstone coffee every day. And this was not a nine to five job. I actually had to live up there the entire time. In fact, my contract said if I came down before 32 days, I didn't get paid. Uh, my living area was 178 square feet of luxury. Well, okay, no running water. There was a poor John uh, on the adjacent roof, and there was this little tiny cubby hole where I slept at night. But you know what? I was a semi employed actor, and this place was a lot better than my apartment. <laughs> so, and this job, talk about a piece of cake. I mean, wave at people, drink free coffee, read the newspaper. Whoa, was I wrong? This thing went viral in sort of an 80s kind of way, where newspaper articles were written all the country. Now, in the little town of Elmira, New York, my grandmother picked up her local newspaper and read about the billboard. Instantly, my days were filled with radio interviews and newspaper interviews and all sorts of interviews. And I had to be up there and I'm like, well, every day kind of started the same way. I woke up, I put on my robe, I waved to commuter traffic, then I put my water through my coffee maker and I set that aside because I used that for a sponge bath later. Then then I made my coffee. I found out that five cups of coffee a day, really good, great for creativity, 10 plus cups of coffee a day destroys you. <laughs> the other thing I discovered was that Heidekees, they are a really good idea. See, I managed to actually lock myself out of my billboard one night <laughs> on a porta john run at three o'clock in the morning. I'm standing there shivering and thinking, oh my God, I'm waiting for two hours for Mike. Mike is the guy who shows up with his big truck and he changes the coffee of the day sign on my billboard. And he helped me break into my apartment. <laughs> So, I am a week into this gig and I am in trouble because I am sleeping less than four hours a night. I can't get to bed before 2 a.m. because I live right next to the university district and drunk college students need to meet the guy on the billboard. And so, I am exhausted, I am over-caffeinated, and I'm lonely surrounded by thousands of people. And I think for the first time, I don't think I'm gonna make it through. And I look down the next morning and this car pulls up, a mom and two kids, I want nothing to do with them, I'm hiding. And I hear them, oh mom, mom, the billboard guy isn't here, oh no. And, I, and the mom says, that's okay, honey, I think he's in the back right now. And I thought, I've heard this conversation before. <laughs> I was at the zoo with my mom. I'm a bear at the zoo. So I get up and I walk out and I walk outside my box and I get outside on my little balcony and I wave to the kids and they go crazy. They jump up and down, big smiles. And that's when it dawned on me. We all need community no matter where we live. And so I started spending more and more time out on my balcony. And I met my neighbors, the guy who owned the donut shop, and the people who owned the Subway sandwich shop, and the people that walk from the bus stop into the university district every day. And it was Halloween, and so I asked my community to come trick or treat at my house. <laughs> And over a hundred people showed up. One day, a guy shows up with two baseball mitts and a ball. He throws up a mitt and we play catch for two hours. So, I'm thinking, oh, this is amazing. And you know what? There were times I had to scream into my pillow, but overall, I really learned to love my neighbors and my neighborhood. But there was something else that was happening. This, this thing was changing my brain because I was looking down at the world at this extreme angle for 32 days, right? And my brain was compensating. So when I finally came down from the billboard, my brain kept compensating. So I was excited and freaked out because it was as if I was living in a baseball dugout three feet below the ground. This lasted six hours beyond the time I came down from the billboard. And this whole thing reminded me of when I use my phone too much. I mean, it's exciting, it's exhausting, and it warps my view of the world a little bit that kind of freaks me out. You know, it has been over 32 years since I lived 32 days on a billboard. And there's a couple of things that hold true. And that is, 
Life is always better when I live outside the box and beyond my phone. Thank you very much. <laughs>